I don't think you'll find another place like this anywhere in the world. These towers that shoot into the sky. In Patagonia, you have 5,000 foot faces rising straight out of the glacier, like rows of sharpened teeth. The climbing here is very technically challenging. No, I mean, you're talking about always climbing vertical granite. There's a lot of ice and mixed climbing, what we like to call alpine trickery. You get terrible weather there. You're so close to the Pacific. The storms come in off the ocean, they just slam into the mountains. It's so sudden and so ferocious. If you get caught in one of those storms, you're in big trouble. These crazy rime ice mushrooms form that can become like a bombing range. That's right where we were, right where that came down. It's a very, very serious place that should not be taken lightly. Whoa! The first thing you see, even from hundreds of miles away as you're driving into town, is the Fitzroy skyline. How would you not want to try a skyline like that? I mean, you see it, and it's just it's the obvious thing. Oh, yeah, I want to go up and down all that thing. The full Fitz Traverse is the biggest project waiting to get done. Seven beautiful summits all lined up in one straight ridge. We climb all of those peaks in one go. It's an objective that has been talked about for a long time. You know, who's going to do it? Someone can think that the people who are going to do that have got to be some grizzled alpinist. Wait, Tommy? You mean the rock climber? Oh. oh no, Tommy's a lot more than a rock climber. I've been climbing my whole life, but I was kind of a fair weather rock climber. When I thought of Patagonia, I thought of burly dudes with big beards suffering in the mountains. But then I came down with my friend Topher and had just a mind-blowing trip. I knew that if he could handle the ice and the snow and the wind, that then if we could get him to the rock, that he would totally crush it. Once you get to the rock climbing, it's incredible. I mean, it's like nothing else I've experienced ever since then. I've just craved these big objectives. It was very clear that he could change the game in Patagonia. I came back a couple more times, and I'd always see that iconic Fitzroy Massif ridgeline. The idea to traverse the entire thing seemed like one of the most obvious, awesome objectives I had ever seen. Starts here, goes. The traverse is four miles long. It involves 12,000 feet of vertical gain. You need to keep going many, many days. You'd have to be able to move really fast over thousands of feet of vertical rock. So that's why I asked Alex if he wanted to go down to Patagonia and try and climb this thing with me. You know, the ability to be bold, which we all know Alex was super bold, is kind of the key to going fast down there. Come on, Tommy! Yay! You know, I mean, Tommy's the man. I've looked up to him since I was 12. I've never had much interest in alpine climbing. I don't know how to use ice tools. I don't like being cold. But if Tommy says that we can do it, I'm willing to go with him. Because anytime Tommy wants to climb, like, you're gonna do something cool. So what do you guys think you're gonna climb? A little wintry in the mountains. Something snowy, probably. We're gonna turn into alpine climbers, see how that goes. I know how it's gonna go for me. <laughs> Not that well. This year I decided to bring my whole family. <laughs> so, what do you think of this, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> I named my son Fitz after the mountain because this place has been so special to me. Gonna go climb your mountain. When this weather window showed up on the forecast, I learned that Rolando Garibaldi and Colin Haley were gonna try the Fitz Traverse as well. Rolo and Colin are like the gurus. They're the Patagonia experts. Rolo wrote the guidebook. I figured they had a way better chance than we had. Rolo and I tried the Fitz Traverse twice together. Uh, both times we didn't get very far. I thought that Tommy and Alex had a good chance of pulling it off. This man's like, kids. And I definitely thought that Rolo and I had a good chance of pulling it off also. Obviously, all of us would have liked to pull it off first. I'm pretty stoked to uh, race for the Fitzroy range. <laughs> yeah, this is actually going to be kind of classic. <laughs> we felt like such gumbies compared to Rollo and Colin. Got some good snow conditions going on. <laughs> we show up at the base. Alex had brought the wrong kind of crampon. Got some crampons. His crampon was made to clip onto a mountain boot, and all we had were Gore-Tex tennis shoes. I wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> It was going to be really difficult, potentially a little dangerous, because there was a good chance those crampons were just going to fall right off. 
We ran into Tommy and Alex at the start of the Fitztraverse. We chatted with them for a few minutes and then started up. They started up a big snow goalie. Being rock climbers, we did the steep technical rock climb, but we quickly realized that there was a lot of ice in the cracks. Alex is climbing with an ice tool clip to his harness. We were just chopping ice out of all the cracks as we tried to climb them. Putting cams in, being like, I don't know, if, if one lobe is on ice, is that OK? <laughs> Oh yeah, Tommy. Oh yeah. How was that pitch? My hand's bleeding, my jacket's full of holes. We got up to this point about two thirds of the way up Gijeme and Rolo and Colin were sitting on a ledge waiting for us. Rolo was feeling super sick and that was it for us. We had to go down and we knew that Alex had these crampons that really weren't gonna work and they were just gonna try anyways. Before they went down, Rolo actually took off his own crampons and gave them to Alex, which was a giant gesture. For Rolo to just basically give up his dream of doing the Fitz Traverse and then give me the tools that I need to finish the Traverse, you're like, oh, that's, you know, I mean, that's very big of him. I mean, we offered them a bunch of water and basically gave them a hand on whatever we could. Our small participation in, in, in their Traverse, so our small contribution is a pair of crampons. For the next four days, we climbed up and down thousands of feet. We destroyed ourselves and our equipment. And there was a lot of times when I thought we were in way over our heads. But that's what makes for really rich experiences. There's Tommy sending the gnar. This is gonna be so rad, dude. This is the kind of thing I see in Alpinist magazine, <laughs> except that we're actually doing it. Pretty epic camp setup. Oh wow, dude, check out the shadow. We're about to climb to the actual summit. Tommy's about to aid it through the night. Feeling a little intimidated at the moment. Yeah, don't worry about it though. You're a total boss. Woo, on the summit! 